the At Your Insta podcast is brought to you by Comic Town. Check them out at www.comictown.net or search for Comic Town Gaming Center on Facebook. Hello and welcome to Grease Live. At, that's not. It's not at all. That's not at all what this is. That's uh, first of all. Uh, that we're not even close to the amount of production level that Grease Live could possibly have. Do 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 do. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that because I don't want to get sued. I didn't do it in any recognizable tone. Thank you. I guess you were you were pretty flat, so I guess that's fine. No, but welcome to at your end step. Sorry for our time away. We've all had like. Things going on, or being sick, or what have you. So uh, sorry about that. Um, hope uh, hope you, you didn't miss us too much. Just enough. <laughs> um, but we have another fun-filled episode for you here. As much as fun-filled as uh, we all can be. Um, so we'll, we'll try to be high energy. But I think most everyone's either sick or got something else going on in their like, lives. Like Dave, you're still in the throes. Yeah, like I had a pretty like it was just a cold, but it was like I don't know. It was kind of miserable for a couple of days, and now I have like the after effects of just like sinus infection y and chest congestion stuff going on. So it probably sound weird, but you know. Yeah, and I got sort of sucker punched by the flu the last couple of days. I'm doing okay now, but it is, it is rough. So, but we're here for you because we're it's committed. important, yeah, apparently. It hey, what? Don't say apparently. <laughs> Undercutting the message. I'm sorry. I didn't mean slime. to do that. I mean, at your <laughs> of Grease Life. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so we uh, have a, a, a little bit of a community topic to talk about, and then most of it's going to be competitive in the Pro Tour, which is happening this weekend, so we definitely want to talk about that. Um, so let's jump right into it and talk about the uh, community thing that we have going on. So um, just today they announced that uh, Magic Online is going to be doing this really interesting thing, basically, and it's called the Pro Tour Gauntlet. Uh, and what it is basically is a queue that's going to be opened up a week from today when we're recording Wednesday, so the 10th, I believe it is. Yes. Um, and what this queue is going to be is is going to be um, constructed a uh, constructed queue basically, where you don't need cards technically, right? Because you get handed a random uh, what uh, Pro Tour deck from the modern Pro Tour that's happening over the weekend, and it's going to be selected from what the best performing decks. As well as like some selection from Magic R and D. Yeah, they're they're a little vague on that. I'm, yeah. I'm sure they want to see how it breaks out because they like, they don't want just want to say like oh the top sixteen decks because like you can have like multiple copies of the same deck and it will hurt diversity. So I'm assuming they'll look at the overall field and they'll select uh, you know the ones that did the best and probably some that received some hype. Uh, and yeah, then you'll get this random deck and it'll be really fun. I mean, hopefully. Uh, so you get what three minutes to review the deck uh, once you see it. <laughs> That's a deck, <laughs> <laughs> and then you kind of play in the Swiss queue with you know seven other people, um, and it's you know, fairly interesting. This is a, a you know something that they've never tried to do. It's where it's you know it's a constructed queue where you don't need to have cards, which is kind of interesting. The downside is you don't necessarily get to pick what you play, um, but uh, if you're you know someone that is you know, a grinder or something like that, you're pretty well versed with what other decks could potentially show up. Unless there is going to be a breakout deck that shows up, you know, this weekend, which is very possible with, you know, the bannings that have happened. Uh, so if that happens, then you might get something spicy that you may want to play. But um, it's really interesting because it gives players a way to access decks that they are seeing over the weekend without, you know, having to necessarily own all the cards, which in modern can be you know, pretty hard. Oh, with the play points payout, like it's also like it's like six event tickets or like sixty some play points, like sixty five, I think. Yeah. So like, you get a couple wins, and essentially you could just like, really just sort of like free roll through this if you do okay, and just get to try out a bunch of different decks. This just this sounds like a lot of fun to me. Just like, you know, just just fun, which is you know you you think of Moto being a grind a lot of the times. So like this is just like nah, just have fun. Yeah, I think this is really cool for like, you know, if you don't know what deck you want to play, you know. And you can just try out a bunch of different things, see what you like. Um, one thing I was a little confused with on the announcement was that you can... So you have the deck review period, which I, it, you said it was like three minutes, right? And it says, can you change the cards? And it says you can change the cards, but uh, if you do decide to change it, your configuration would be used for the first game in all three of your matches. So like, does that mean you can just change what's in... Like, you can put some sideboard cards in the main deck, or does that mean you can just add any card... 
I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll find out. But. That is a, a very good question. Um, and, the, of course, they, they, they tell you that they don't suggest doing that in the first place. <laughs> so um, They but, could always just make it so that you can't, you know. Stop it. I'm just saying. <laughs> just, why, why are you putting a hole in this? There's, there's fun to be had here. Don't ruin it by talking about Moto. Um, but, hey, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm all for them trying something new. With, it's pretty exciting. I'm sure a lot of people will just say, I wish you would just fix the program in general <laughs> before trying anything new. Uh, but that's not always how things tend to work out in the end. So be appreciative of new and interesting things that they're trying. Uh, that's my motto. Um, and then maybe we'll get a, you know, fully functioning product that Kibler will, will play. <laughs> I was watching his stream yesterday and he, he had like a bug that happened and then he like lost a, a, a like a lost really badly on, on the client while, while testing for the pro tour. And he's like, I really just don't want to play this product anymore. <laughs> and he said, if you guys want to watch me uh, play this anymore, uh, tell wizards to fix mono. <laughs> Uh, which is, uh, I mean, if he he's the man, right? He's the one who's done it before. I know. Maybe he can do it again. Lead Who knows? The charge. <laughs> lead, lead, lead the charge. Lead the charge, Gibbler. Um, but that's pretty much it for uh, community. We might have missed stuff. Who cares? Um, <laughs> there may have been some things that happened the last two yeah, weeks. I don't like, know. There's some other like bits and bobbles that that happened. Like Frank Lepore is no longer a TCG player. Uh, whatever. BBD is now with Channel Fireball. That's cool too. Uh, a bunch of like writers changing teams. Who cares? I mean, this is like as the world turns. Yeah, basically. <laughs> like, like we'll take keys through the hourglass. So that would that would be a new segment <laughs> that we will have to start called um, as the turn ends. As the turn ends. <laughs> <laughs> dun 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 dun. Is that like I, the I cleanup? Know, this is like a weird piano ballad. Is, this, is that going to be the cleanup step? Is that like the next? <laughs> the cleanup. Uh, yeah. The permanents go back to where they're supposed to, and <laughs> it's it's like Talking Dead. It's like you know after at your end step, then you have the cleanup step. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like clearly. we talk about what happened during the regular podcast, and then people try to do, put stuff in the end step in the cleanup step, and you're like, no, we've already gone past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna have to wait until the next turn, sir. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to uh, competitive. Um, all the GPs were limited. And they're, they're this is you know something they're doing they're unifying what the GPs are every weekend, um, and but there were three of them. There's GP Vancouver, GP Mexico City, and GP Nagoya. Um, so we won't necessarily talk about a whole lot of them, but we do want to give shoutouts to the winners of each of the tournaments. So when we take a look at Vancouver, we see that Adam Jansen defeats uh, Jeremy Dazani in the finals. So congrats to uh, Adam Jansen. Can, uh, can I just say something real quick? Sure. So I randomly watched that because I, you know, was really congested and like just randomly woke up at. 1.30 or in the morning or whatever it was that it was on. And I was just like, oh, I wonder if the GP's over. And I was able to catch, like, you know, the finals of it. And it was actually pretty entertaining. Yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, Dazani's a name that everyone kind of knows. But a Adam Jansen's another, you know, grinder who you have encountered many times. And solid player. So see him get a, you know, another sort of signature um, sort of signature win here. Yeah, he had a he had a pretty big comeback in Game 3 in the finals where it looked like he was dead for sure. So much so that Rich Hagen was already saying, like, Wow, just Dazani just refuses to. Lose. Oh wait, he just he lost. <laughs> so, like, it was it was kind of funny, but yeah, I, I'm glad that uh, Adam Jansen was able to take it down. Yeah, uh, and for GP Mexico City, we have uh, Fabrizio Interi defeating uh, Tomoharu Saito <laughs> in Mexico City because you know Saito just he just needs he, more GP wins, he, right? He didn't want to go to the, the Japanese. <laughs> no, he went no. all the way to Mexico City. Mexico City. Well, uh, he, he wants to be in Atlanta next week, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it makes sense if you look at the numbers for each of these tournaments. So Nagoya had t 2,600 people, yeah. and Mexico City had 787. <laughs> so maybe that was the right call. I don't yeah, know. clearly. I I, uh, I don't blame uh, Saito for, for making the choices that he made. Uh, I, I also give a shout-out to uh, uh, Robert Wallerstein. Uh, so the Wally is a guy I know from up north who uh, is just a really nice, uh, fun guy and uh, just drafts all the time, like, his Saturdays are essentially drafting and eating sushi. <laughs> so uh, he went down there, I think, with uh, he was down there with you know, Dan Musser, the mm -hmm. who went down there, and he, uh, he got his first top eight. So you make his first, uh, I believe, for his first Pro Tour appearance. So to, and uh, who doing that? So I want to give a shout out to him. That's pretty awesome. And he made a really strong run there. Was able to close out. Uh, you know, I lost in the top eight, unfortunately. But I mean, when your top eight includes you know Martin Dang and, and Saito, and you know. You do you, you feel pretty good, I guess. To yeah, be in that top eight. yeah, it's yeah. it's a pretty uh, illustrious top eight to be a part of, <laughs> um, especially for it to you know be your first one. So, fair, fair. Can't really complain. 
Um, and then lastly, uh, we have uh, GP Nagoya, which is won by uh, Tomonori uh, Hirami, uh, defeating uh, Ryota Takeuchi uh, in Nagoya. So, Can I just say something about the, the GP coverage? So I believe this is the first one of them debuting, like, the, the all-new GP coverage. You know, we're <clears> going <throat> to have a team covering all the GPs at the same time. It's like, it wasn't really that exciting. To be honest, I, now I didn't watch a whole lot of the GP coverage. I watched it a little bit, and I watched the finals there. But um, from what I could gather, their coverage of like the other uh, locations was basically, oh, we're gonna throw up like a slide, like they do at the Pro Tour <laughs> when they show like the decks or whatever. It was like that, and it's like like a players to watch type deal where it's like, oh, here's like, you know, oh, over in Mexico City we see, uh, you know, Fabrizio and Terry's X and one or whatever, and it's like, I don't know. I was kind of expecting more of like a live. So feature, the, the I issue guess. with that is the huge time, time, time difference. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's you, true. You were, Japan was another four hours ahead of, you know, or in a four or five, or was it four or six hours ahead of Vancouver? I don't know. And then you know, Mexico City was what two or three hours behind, you know, Vancouver. So well, you, you've got almost an entire day like <laughs> like separating the two. Yeah, that, that's true. I guess, but it, it was just like, I don't know. I guess I was expecting a little bit more. Uh, maybe they plan on doing a little bit more as it goes on. This was the first one, but I don't know. We'll see, I guess. I, th- I think this weekend will be a big tell of what like new things they want to do because like the Pro Tour should be like the shining star, right? So, hey, yeah. we're gonna do all these cool new things at the GP level, and we're gonna start it here. With the, and we'll see. And may you know the Pro Tours I think have been pretty good recently, so we'll, we'll see where they go from here. All right. Uh, so that was everything for the GPS. Um, we also had a Star City Games here in our own backyard, Columbus. It was standard and had a total of six hundred ninety-eight players, so decently sized one. Um, nothing like, uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati was still bigger, right? It was, what, 1,300? Uh, it was over 1,000, right? It was, it was yeah, over it was definitely thousand. over 1,100, oh, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah it was insane to think about. Um, but it was pretty exciting. We were all there in, in attendance and, uh, had, you know, varying, um, records by the end of the day. Um, those who made it to the end of the day. And, um... <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we had Jacob Ball uh, taking down the entire tournament playing uh, Four Color Rally uh, defeating Andy Ferguson playing Bant Company in the finals um, but there were uh, you know uh, obviously Jacob Ball and, and um, Andy Ferguson had been you know names especially Ferguson had top aided the previous um, uh, open the, the week before uh, with Abzan Company uh, so he has been, he, he just enjoys the Coco a lot. So been kind of tweaking that, um, uh, Matt, uh, that deck, uh, switching out entire colors and, and shifting from a, you know, wedge to a shard. Would you say he's in love with the Coco? He, I might, I might. I only really feel like, uh, the person, uh, who sang that, that sang that song can say that as well as weirdly Patrick Chapin. I feel like he does it really well. <laughs> I'm not, you know, passing any judgment on Patrick Chapin. What is the tune of that song? Is that like, I'm in love with a dancer? Is that what it is? Like, I'm in love with a Coco. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's similar. <laughs> that uh, makes it sound like <laughs> way more innocent. <laughs> anyway, we'll listen to the song afterwards, and then we'll report back. Um, but we also had Tom Ross, uh, Matthew Tickle, uh, and Andrew Tenjum in the top eight as other notable names. All playing, you know, respectively interesting decks. So we had Tom Russ with uh, Red Black Dragons. Um, we had Andrew Tenjum with Jeskai Black playing Mantis Riders. Uh, uh, decided that it was a you know good route to take uh, this weekend. And uh, then we had uh, um, Matthew Tickle also playing Four Color Rally. Now, why do they call his Four Color Company and Bow Four Color Rally? Like, I don't know. I mean, they're both playing Company, right? Yeah. They're, oh, but, look, they are. I don't understand this, yeah. but whatever. It's it's you know, uh, well, Tickle's deck has uh, a Bring the Light in it. Yeah, he's which, running that for a little while, which fundamentally changes it from being a Rally <laughs> deck. Clearly, guys. Um, but I mean, really, what this kind of showed uh, is that um, a, a while a lot of people. Um, I, I, I know that I had read a lot of articles leading up to Columbus that people were, were saying that Four Color Rally was kind of, you know, overblown based on numbers, based on how many decks actually, you know, converted from day one to day two and how they performed in day two, that it might not be as strong. But clearly that doesn't seem to be the case. And now is, you know, the best deck, a lot of people are saying. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think it's always, well, not always been, but I think it's it's been the best deck for a little while now. I thought it was the best deck prior to... Um, Oath and 
uh, I feel that it got better. I mean, a lot of the other decks did get better as well, but I think you know Rally is able to keep up, uh, especially with Reflector Mage. It's just an yeah. insane card in that deck. That's uh, that seems to be sort of the, the crux of everyone's argument is yeah. that like it being a two three in general is like uh, what actually makes it busted a little bit for uh, for for constructed. So that's uh, a little bit a uh, little bit interesting. Was that were, were, was that sirens? Yeah, we're we're just like top level. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Michael J. We're, record, we're recording from New York City. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, I guess it should be, what, Michael K? Is that yeah, that's that's actually it, that's what it. I should have said? Uh, <laughs> um, no, but, it, I mean, Rally, yeah, I, I thought it... The fact that Rally didn't top eight in Atlanta, I thought was a little bit you know, a little there, bit weird. There were four of them in the top 16, so yeah, it was like... It, it, was, was, it was there. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I wasn't surprised to see it take it down. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I hadn't... Prior to the rotation, I hadn't like played a lot of standard. Probably in the last couple of months, I would say. And uh, I guess I, I didn't like realize how slow that deck is. Like there were so many people, like just people, even just around me, they were like, "Oh man!" and like picked up a draw because my rally opponent was so slow. And it's like I, I noticed like a lot of people that um, the, the day two cutoff was was X two and one. And a lot of the people that I recognized that you know with that nineteen points were rally players. I was like, "All right, well." I guess that's I guess that's just how it goes. I mean, it makes sense. It's like a a deck that has to have you know a certain volume of things in their graveyard. Also, it needs to have five lands, two of them you know with correct colors. You know, it's not just something where you're like, ah, oh, you hit this and like you're just dead. It's not like you know what we expect to see in like modern, where you have ad nauseum, um, you have you know storm and things like that, where it's just like you just go off. Um, you just need a lot of things to, to kind of happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, it's a deck that's playing, what, like 16 fetch lands or something? Mm hmm And on top of that, you don't really have a, a great beatdown game. Like, you just have a bunch of, like, two threes and two twos and stuff. And, like, a lot of games you're just grinding them out with Zuleport Cutthroat, you know what I mean? Like, one point at a time. So it's like, I get it, but at the same time, it's kind of annoying. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's definitely annoying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very good deck. I'm not going to take that away. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't disagree with you there. It's definitely something that um, seems to be a menace, and uh, you will see from now going forward. Yeah, like, I think it's a, it's a healthy deck for, for to be the best deck, because it's definitely beatable, and there are definitely cards in the format that, that do very well against it. So it's not like an oppressive best deck, but it's, it's one that I think does take some skill to play, you know, to play correctly, and it does, you know, rewards... It rewards people that know. Yeah, how to play I mean, very well. you'll you'll play against someone that just picked up the deck, and you'll you know be able to outplay them just because they don't know how to play. So you'll get free wins that way, and then if you you know dedicate yourself to playing rally, then you're going to get free wins the other way around. So, yeah. Um, also, you can just you know try to your best to play decks that have game against it. So you know we kind of see that with uh, Red Black Dragons, which I think is a deck that we wanted to highlight. You know, this is a deck that is not weak to uh, things like Reflector Mage because uh, you have cards you just you don't want to bounce back like oh yeah bounce back your thopter engineer i don't want to break regent or yeah. it's like like that can be a tempo play it can also just like be a play that becomes like really difficult to pull off the lower your life total gets you know and yep. I mean? like bolts are real <laughs> yep and then you know you, you have coligan as you know your, your top end your big beater and like My lady love <laughs> that, that that's a card that uh, doesn't typically stay on the battlefield for very long mainly because you're putting it back in your hand after you've dashed it um, and yeah, yeah, the rally deck just has no way to block flying whatsoever. So right. their interaction is minimal, and you can just hit them for you know that the, the way that deck works is it you know it can slowly grind people out. Well, if you're just taking out giant chunks of their life total in a sitting, you know there's not a lot of grinding going on there. No, <laughs> just my ex. <axe. laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, this is a deck that I've, I've played in, in various incarnations. I played it before um, um, Ozo Gatewatch came out. And, like, knowing the power of, like, Coligan is, is it's definitely just a, you know, a sweet, sweet card to, to be casting um, for, for sure. So I'm definitely a fan. Um, if there was a deck that, um, if I did not want to play um, Ramp, I would probably just play Red Black Dragons because I saw most of the cards. So it's like, why not? Um, yeah, I mean, we we did. I, I I do like the look of this deck, and I, I do think it's it's a good call moving forward. Um, I do think just the card Draconic Roar I think is very well positioned right now. Um, so being able to fully take advantage of of uh, you know making it into a Searing Blaze is kind of where you want to be. I feel like right now in the format. 
But um, but yeah, Tom Ross played this uh, in the top eight, and I know Chris Anderson also played it. He finished in the top sixteen, I believe. Uh, yeah. it was yeah, it's not top sixteen, the top. I think he might he was like, around twentieth or something. Yeah, like that. something yeah. like twenty third. Okay, so I mean, it, it was um, you know, a lot of the, I guess more more notable names were playing it, um, in the room. So yeah, I mean, this deck it really gets a chance to really it, you know, I, I was talking about this like you know, I think Dave, you said you were interested in this deck, mm-hmm. and, you know, and I said like this isn't that dissimilar from where I was at you know before the new set with you know the four color version of this. Obviously, maybe a, a couple of you know I wasn't playing things like uh, Flamewake Phoenix, but you know Thunder Ray Regent Culligan and P and Kieran Alar and Hangerback Walker are all a really good engine. Um, but the one thing I think this deck is really benefiting from is that there's just no control deck right now. You know, Esper Dragons was pushed out. Like, that's the weak matchup for a deck like this, is the deck that could just, like, you know, when you're tapping out for, you know, on turn five to, like, dash something, you're just, like, counter it, cast Dig through time. You know what I mean? That, that's where you're really miserable. So, you know, I, I've been playing a Grixis variant that wants to play a little bit of interaction, and this, the red-black version, could just say, I, I don't think I need it right now. And if you look here in the top 32, I, unless I'm crazy, I don't see a single copy of Esper Dragons. Oh, no. I the closest thing to a control deck you could say here is the the uh, black white um, Hoagland deck that's sitting there, mm-hmm. and then calling that a true control deck I think is uh, iffy at, at best. Yeah, it's it's certainly a stretch. So uh, you know, in like Jeskai Black, if you look at like Andrew Tensum's list, it's gone back to you know Mantis Riders, which you know if the Red Black Dragons deck is all about like Draconic Roar, then it seems like it's just like oh welcome back to my house. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's you know I think that's where you know for right now. Red Black Dragons definitely sits in a good part of the metagame. Uh, if you see a control deck sort of like rear its head, which I think will be hard to do. I just don't, I don't know. What, you have to really build it a specific way. Maybe going all the way back to that sort of weird, like build that uh, Patrick Chapin ran a couple months ago. Was that GP Indie, right? That like main deck Hollow Moonlight and stuff like that. You got to play something really weird to be able to make sure you have a good rally matchup. Oh, oh, I played against that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he had main deck Hollow Moonlight, but I definitely played against it and lost against it. Uh, just, you know, uh, Majoring Esper, yeah, right, 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 right yeah. yeah, but um, I, I kind of um, I feel like it's not that we don't have control decks in the format. I think they've just shifted. I think a lot of these really grindy mid rangey decks are basically acting as control decks now. So these like Mardo, Mardu Green yeah. decks. So like a good example would be the ninth place list played by uh, Boris Pan. I really like the 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 shakedown of this deck. In all honesty, and um, I think a lot of people. Were kind of you know gravitated towards you know Martyr Green after seeing the results from Atlanta, um, but um, I, I like this list. Um, he he definitely um, played against you know uh, Tom Ross and, and gave him the gave him the works if if you will uh, that I saw on the stream on uh, Sunday. Uh, so if, if you want to you know, play something that that could be combating our you know Red Black Dragons and still have some game against you know rally and everything uh, like that, then I, I would suggest looking here. Uh, this this deck is is definitely filled with a lot of expensive cards, but if you already have them, then it makes it a little <laughs> bit easy, uh, easier to access. But man, I, I just like because he's he's freaking playing Chandra, man. This also might be the best Goblin Dark Dwellers deck we've seen so far. <sighs> yeah, like th- the reason why I say these, these are more of the control decks is just like look at the look at the removal suite in this thing. I'm just gonna go down the spells here: Absent Charm, Crackling Doom, Fiery Impulse, Cool Against Command, Murderous Cut. You have Duress, which isn't really removal, but it's a way to one for one. Mm-hmm. Read the Bones. Roast, Ruinous Path. Those are the main deck spells in this. And then Goblin Dark Dwellers brings back all those, basically, except for Murder's Cut. Um, so, yeah, it's just a pile of removal. Some, you know, I guess efficient for what they do, creatures. You know, some of them, you know, is he Drino, Goblin Dark Dweller, Kalidus, Soulfire Grandmaster. I mean, yeah. just a bunch of good cards. <laughs> Yeah, it does seem like going like turn three removal spell, turn four Kalidus, turn five Dark Dwellers get back the removal spell. Like it's probably a way you just can't lose. And like and you, Kalidus could just be Siege Rhino, which is also its other turn four play. Um, and it, it also has a Soulfire route, so like you can just play like the early game sort of Soulfire Fiery Impulse game. To, like like the, you know a lot of the decks, that, a lot of the Absent decks even struggle sometimes with the Atarka decks if they if they can't get a threat down fast enough. You know the hands where you just keep like Anna Fens a Siege Rhino. You know what I mean? And your opponent goes you. Know, you know, turn one Zergo, you can just lose there. But this text is like, well, I'm going to play Soulfire, and then I have all these cheap removal spells that will just get me to, you know, I'll be at a healthy life total when my Siege Runner rolls, or my Siege Runner rolls around. Mm. And all of his four drops, you know, two Cletus and four Siege Rhino, are just, like, really, really bad for the aggressive decks to see. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Kalidus definitely had his, his his moment in the sun, for sure. The card is uh, now you know, pretty expensive, so if you, you didn't pick him up right now, well... 
it might be a bit out of luck. There are definitely, you know, on Star City's website, twenty dollars. So I, mean, I I've been wrong about some cards before. I, I still think that I agree that this card is still just a role player, and that's why you're seeing it as like a one over two of most decks. But when it's been in play, I've seen it do a lot of work, and I know I've seen it in a lot of Jun lists too. And uh, even uh, Willie Idol talking, about, and I'm talking about modern Jun. I'm not talking about like oh, yeah. standard. Yeah. So like, uh, card definitely has more legs than I, than I gave her credit for. And two, it has two exactly. We, we assume. And I gave it one. I, I said it didn't have enough legs to stand on. <laughs> You can stand on one leg, though. Uh, like, I mean, like, did you look at the stuff like he's wearing? He's got all this weird drapery and stuff. He's not going to be able to keep balance. All this leg. weird drapery. <laughs> Clean his scout of the drapes. <laughs> well, look at him. He's got, like, tattered. He literally looks like he put on, like, tattered curtains. He's like, ah, well, I got to see a scary vampire still. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing uh, his best Liza Minnelli impression. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I, I definitely was able to see uh, a little bit of Kalidus in Modern, um, one of the matches that was going on next to me you know, in one of the rounds uh, when I was playing in the Modern Classic was, was a Jun player playing Kalidus against an Abzan company that can uh, do a little bit of work in that matchup. <laughs> I can't it imagine was, why. It was pretty good. I can't yeah. imagine why. I just want to see some of these altered because they... Cletus just sounds like Cletus. I just want to see some get her done hats altered on this Cletus. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I got myself a Cletus. <laughs> it's pretty good. I didn't realize that the card was uh, that expensive. I saw it was on the rise, but man, 20 bucks? Woo. That's a hefty price to pay. Playable Mythic. Of course. Too bad I didn't open any of those. Man. Except for. What's, there's a Mythic that's like playable that's just no not money, and I can't think of what it is now in standard. So, I mean, cool a story. Lot. We went rock is three dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's one that's like that sees like a, a good amount of play. That it's like it's pretty cheap. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's the one. It's I was gonna thinking. rotate. That's why. Yeah, yeah it's gonna that, rotate. That's and, true. And it was also open like a billion times due to fetch land. So, yeah, I mean, AFS has managed to keep its price low. Granted, it's a four of, and it's good against rally. But yeah, it, um, hey, Chandra still st- you know as as a planeswalker staying above. Uh, you know, double digits. Uh, she she is another one who's sort of like she she's sort of getting that little bounce back. People were like, yeah, she may only again may be the a, a one of, but she seems to be the perfect one of. Like, uh, I you know I dabble a little in a little bit of everything. So, <laughs> card's sweet. I'm I'm a big fan of Chandra. So I want her to go uh, to keep on succeeding. So, it's cool. Any other decks that we want to talk about from the uh, the top eight? Uh, well, oh yeah, we do want to give out a shout out to uh, Connor Bowman, who was the winner of the Comic Town 5K. Um, also shows up here at 11th with Abzan, so shout out to him. Yeah, he's been playing that deck, I, and I, I also want to do a good job to uh, the team uh, Lotus in general. Yeah, they had you know, a pretty good showing. Uh, they uh, they had Kent Ketter in the top 32, Jesse Hefner, Chris Anderson, uh, you had Andrew Tenjo, but I think Jacob Bow also was in that mm. group. So, yeah, I think that's the first. You know, they, they they started this team. If you paid attention to that, you know, like. You go into these tours, you know, and it, this is the first song I think they've had where it's looked a little more cohesive. But if you're looking at this, like the top 32, I kudos to Star City because like the tour aspect of this also seems to be holding through. There's a ton of names in this top 32 who are also in the top 32 of Atlanta. I mean, going all the way down, you had like like Emma Handy is in this top 32 again. Uh, I, the aforementioned you know Lotus members. Uh, I think was it uh, Willie Porges was that he was yeah. also last week yeah, right Willie in tenth Porges. place. So, I mean, like, you've got a, I mean, you have people who are going to tour with this. They've gotten in the bus. They're following the Grateful Dead around the country. It's, uh, it's going to be great. I, I definitely heard, you know, a lot of people saying that, like, you know, I'm going to hit every open, you know, either this season or this year. Uh, and, you know, the points chase is a real thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's kudos to Star City for, you know, continuing on uh, the great series that they have going. So, yeah, and, I mean, it, it's something that is, you know, super nice when they aren't necessarily going across the country every weekend, you know, it's in a sort of centralized, you know, section of the, you know, I mean, kind of United Atlanta States. Columbus, what, eight hours? Yeah. So, I mean, that's not, I mean, that's totally doable. Exactly. And depend, depending on where home base is for you, it could just be, you know, four hours to each, which is, you know, perfectly acceptable. Exactly. So, so um, it makes it easier for you to be like, well, I'll just, you know, keep rolling along with this because I don't have to like be in Columbus and then be in like, you know, Seattle or what have you, you know, it's like all within a relatively close distance. And then you actually have a bridging tournament when you have the regional championships now. So you have something where it's like, well, I can, you know, go to Columbus and then like you could theoretically just stay in Columbus and play the regionals and then, you know, move on from your, you know, next. I don't know how well you're necessarily doing to be able to do that, but maybe you're doing really well. I, I you know, and I, I want to point this out and we could talk, I don't know how this compares numbers to standard wise, but the you know the cap for regionals in Columbus this weekend hint hint is 350 people. Uh, there I think they're over 200, yeah. like 220 as of today. Which if you think about that, this open was 700 people. 
and they're looking to hit this cap for modern. So I, I don't know if that says about modern compared to standard, but I also say like, you know, like you could very well be seeing that effect of like, you know, the, you know, the tour was here, you know, the open was here last weekend and it's like, oh, and here's this regionals and you're definitely going to push over effect because I mean, I know they, they gave out all the play mats in the last regionals, but 220, like on, as of Wednesday, you know what I mean? As far as pre-orders, that's pretty good. Oh yeah, for sure. So yeah, we're we're all pretty excited about it, and it, it seems to be working out pretty well for for Star City Games. So good power to you. I mean, it was a well run tournament as well. We can't complain. The the, the rounds were a little long over, but you know what are you going to do? A bunch of rally players yeah, drawing yeah, apparently. Say, you know them rally players. You know how they roll. <laughs> they got tightened up. <laughs> Gotta play prowess, man. Gotta get those rounds over with. Yeah, but not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. So, do you, do you guys want to you know, regale any tales of, of performance? I played uh, Eldrazi Ramp. It, it did not necessarily do well. The room wasn't very well suited for it as, either. Uh, there weren't any you know lists that we saw even in like the top thirty two. So it's definitely a rough rough you know you know uh, path for that deck going forward. But um, I, I still want to work with it. I still want to tweak it. Um, I'm I'm trying to do something crazy. I want to move away from uh, Nissus Pilgrimage. Um, I think that that forces the the deck to play a lot of um, forests which you do need obviously to make your deck work but it, it allows you to not do things like you know potentially you know position playing ruin their wake or play more red sources to play other cards like chandra uh as more of a you know focal point for the deck so i'm gonna try it it may not work who cares i, like it. I, I think there are enough cards in standard that you have available to you right now where you can kind of mess around like it's not like mrs pilgrimage is the only ramp card that you can yeah, play you exactly I mean? like so th there are you know, different ways you can take it um, like you said, you can go ruin their wake into you know, Hedron Archive or whatever mm -hmm. instead of going. And then, you, and then you can maybe even like look at the plans, like they're playing a Thought Not Seer or like Reality Smashers out of the board to just sort of get people. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, oh, I'm not, I'm done ramping. Take five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, we, we stopped here. <laughs> the ramp stops here. <laughs> uh, used to be the buck, now the ramp. <laughs> um, Dave and I both played the uh, Prowess deck. Very, very similar builds once again. Um, I, I had a pretty frustrating day. My last two opens have been the worst opens in my entire Magic playing career, so that's cool. Uh, I won round one without any issue, and then didn't win. Uh, I wouldn't let's see here. I'm trying to think of it. Yeah, I won a game after that. Uh, my next two rounds involved me drawing. You know, and I and I'm I'm one who is prone to you know tilt and that sort of thing, uh, and I've done a good job stopping that. But ha having people watch as I draw my 14th and 15th lands in matchups where my opponent is dead to most any spell was really, really frustrating. That happened two rounds in a row. Like, treasure cruises were, like, just garbage. Just like, uh, okay, land, land, Jace. That was cool. I appreciate you. But we've already had most of these. So they, they were aggressively bad draws. And then I played against a ramp deck in round four or game one. My opponent, I didn't know it was ramp. He put mountain, um... Uh, shrine, I think, or some colorless land. Mountain, colorless land, mountain, mountain. Thought not seer. And I and I, I ran him over at that point. I was like, okay, so like red Eldrazi. I'm not sure. So I board strangely. I keep the I keep like a, a loosish hand, but whatever. And I'll, he goes turn one forest shoddy offshoot. And I'm like, we didn't board for this deck and got like double punished by an average keep and a really bad board plan. Uh, and then game three was like you know another game where I just drew a ton of lands and like. Was you know was just not drawing a lot of relevant spells, but set up a board state to win. I knew like the whole game of testing the waters on a Kozlik's return, and like I, I I about three or four turns before the penultimate turn, I was like, okay, he just doesn't have it. Let's keep going, and I knew he had a world breaker in hand, and he drew the, you know the uh, Kozlik's turn off the top to take take the game, and it was just like you know like play the way I could have, but you know there are multiple turns where I draw one more spell, I can put enough pressure through to get in, and I just kept hitting lands or you know it, it just draws were clunky. The deck is really powerful. But it, even shaving lands, even working with the removal packages, you still had so many games. And, and I saw extreme cases. I saw truly extreme cases. But even some of the average games, it just feels like it draws one card in the wrong order. And, and I had this complaint with the deck in Modern about how sometimes the draw just doesn't line up the way you want. And there's so many powerful decks in the format. I just know, don't know if I can keep looking at this deck. I want to. I love what it's doing. But yeah, is I'm getting really you know sort of disenchanted with it. <laughs> I think I'm with you on that. I mean, uh, I, I had a little bit better of a, a, a better of an experience, but I still didn't day two. Except for the guy, it was a, I think it was actually Lauren Nolan who was he was the one who had 64th place at six two and one and knocked yeah. all the X and threes yeah. out of the day two. Well, there were there were a decent amount though of of 19 point players. It's not like I, he was the only I, one. I, but, yeah. I just have to see him post them, yeah. but like like it was me. <laughs> yeah. But um, 
But yeah, I, I went six and three. I was kind of holding out hope that I would be able to day two with that. But yeah, it turns out that it wasn't good enough. Um, oddly enough, I, I beat like a lot of the decks I didn't expect to beat. Like I, you know, I pretty easily crushed red black dragons, beat a Mardu green deck, uh, which I would ex I would expect that to be a tough matchup because they have so much removal. Um, lost to Esper tokens, rally. I only played rally one time and I lost to it. I lost a game one after I Titan Strength, Team of Battle Rage, and two times in the same game and still lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, my last loss was to that the, the Majoring Esper deck, which I did not expect to see that. And and that's probably not even close to winnable. Like, <laughs> uh, see, like I don't know. Like I, I, I thought like I thought it'd be good because they have a lot of just clunky cards. Like their counter spells like aren't really that great. Like they're trading you know a three mana counter spell for your one mana spell, whatever. Like. I don't know, the, the, the trades don't seem that, um, profitable. Right, they don't seem profitable to them, but, uh, he had like just enough removal to keep me off and I couldn't really, you know, the combo doesn't really work against them. So it was just a, it was a good match though. I mean, but there was not a deck I expected to see. No. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so when six and three, uh, the decks, I don't know. I, I think the decks tier two, I, I would say, I, I think it's just. You just don't have enough powerful things to keep up over a long tournament. I think. I think like week one when we played it at the at the Winter Classic, it was great because you caught a lot of people off guard. Like people didn't really know what was going on. They didn't really know what it was capable of. But now that the deck's more of a known quantity, I think. Not that people are more prepared for it, but people might know how to play against it a little bit better. Yeah, and, and you see, like the more you know, more of these Red Black Dragons deck, and, and even the more of those um, Mardu Green decks you see looking around. Just makes it even tougher for this deck to sort of power through. Uh, you know, I, I keep going back. Like it's got, I, I think it could be tuned to have a pretty favorable company match. Like uh, that, that match has felt pretty solid. And again, you have your your biggest threats are flying threats. So that that's felt pretty good. So it's sort of frustrating to have like a fairly good matchup against. Like you, you have a pretty good, you know, uh, a Tarka Red matchup as well. Like they're very winnable matches. So it, it's sort of frustrating to go. Uh, but even like even like ramp is something I it has been de designated a pretty good matchup, and yet. You just get blown out by certain things, and there's, there's not much you can do the way the draw lines up to play around it. So even when you have a favorable matchup, the deck overall isn't powerful enough to to like, even to beat every out. Yeah, here's a, here's the thing. I think the deck is very reliant on Treasure Cruise really digging you out of a lot of you know a lot of holes. Like the deck, it's not inherently powerful. So like a lot of the cards you're playing individually are just not not that great. And the match I lost against, my, my first loss of the day against the Esper Tokens deck, he basically was in a position where I had a, I had a Swift Spear in play, a Treasure Cruise in hand, and like um, a Slip Through Space or something like that. And he just had a couple cards in hand, no board, basically. And he duressed me, took my Treasure Cruise, played a Gideon, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, it was just like it just one turn, you know what I mean? Like, whereas the next turn, if I cruise, probably, you know, Gonna have a good chance to win the game because I'm gonna draw three cards for one mana. Who knows what else I'm gonna do? That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, like, if if they have a timely duress against you, it can kind of mess up the whole if, everything that you're trying to build up with the deck. Yeah, so much of the deck is a setup. You know, it, yeah, it's really a, and that's and we talked about this a ton, and you wrote about it. And I discussed it. You know, the people who didn't want to like play Jace in the deck, and, like, if you are gonna continue playing this deck, you have to play it with Jace. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, you have to. Yeah, because yeah. the deck isn't, aggr isn't an aggressive deck. If you want to play an aggressive deck, you know, like an actual aggro deck, go play a Tarka Red. This deck is trying to set up for a turn. It doesn't mean it's always comboing you out, but you do have to have a mass of spells in one turn. And uh, and if you sometimes it's two turns when you're doing that, but then you have to set up to have the cruise for the next turn. And yeah, I've definitely been testing in a couple games too. You, you know, those are the critical turns where you're like, okay, if I untap here, I'm good. Oh, Thought Not Seer. Oh, I don't have a Treasure Cruise. Oh, I can't win the game anymore. Yeah, and it was yeah. just like, uh. Yeah, it, it, it's like a house of cards that could very quickly just tumble down, and you know, then you're dead. So, uh, I, I do think it's still it's still a fun deck to play, and um, you know, I encourage people to try it out if you haven't played it. Um, you know, it's definitely it's something. It's different than it's it's kind of similar to Attacker Red in some in some facets, but it, it's pretty much different than everything else that's in standard right now. So if you're looking for something that's not just a grindy, you know, Abzan version, <laughs> then definitely look into it. But I'm going to be looking probably elsewhere from, from here on out. Yeah, same here. Yeah, but, I mean, we don't have to worry about standard for a little bit anyway, so. Um, 
Moving on, we did want to talk about Legacy for a little bit. The Legacy Classic was won by Joe Lissette, uh, playing Miracles. Not not shocking. Um, on the website, it says he was uh, playing Andrew Jessup in the finals, but uh, Dave is reporting that that is inaccurate. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, on-site reporting. Um, he beat... It would have been Jacob Ross. Would have been the only person playing yes. Teamer Delver um, right. in the finals. So apparently, uh, per first-hand accounts, that's who he was playing in the finals. So I'm going to believe first-hand accounts <laughs> and not the website that gave the man the trophy. But either way... They got um, the winner right. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, congratulations, it, Joe Lissette. It, it was very... I, I did... Um, I, I was done with the Modern Classic. I was on my way out the door, and I, I kind of walked by this match as it was going on. So I, I, I watched the fi- you know, game three of the finals, and it was be- pretty exciting. Done with the Swiss of the Modern Classic and walked past the Legacy Classics finals. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes. That's exactly what happened. Interesting. So. Um, but obviously you don't listen to this for Legacy. Let's move on to Modern. Um, that was taken down by Dan Jessup playing Blue Green Infect. Um, defeated Green Red Scape Shift, uh, played by uh, Joey uh, Miss Bagel. I'm gonna gonna go with that. Um, uh, both, uh, you know, blue green infect is something that we've you know come to know and and, and detest or love in modern. And truly cherish. Uh, green red scape shift is a uh, you know something that we've have definitely talked about on the podcast before uh, due to the sheer fact that it plays commune with lava <laughs> in the in the deck, uh, which we find adorable and endearing. So I played against Joey Mispagel and lost to him in the Swiss. Nice and. Uh, yeah, he cast Commune with Lava, and he had, like, one card in his hand. I'm like, well, I could remand this, but... Or if I don't remand it, he's probably going to kill me. And if I do remand it, and you just had a scape shift, then I'm dead. <laughs> so I remanded it, and he scape shifted. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I was talking to him about that card a little bit after the match. I was like, so is that just, like, the Red Sphinx's revelation? Because he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the Red Sphinx's revelation. I was Fair like, enough. All right. It's pretty cool. good. Cool. I have a few of those, I think. At least one. I have a Red Sphinx's revelation. That's only good modern. Don't care. It's not as good as a, as a green time spiral, but... <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Making a lot of lofty claims over there, buddy. Um, but we do have some notable names for our area showing up in the in the top eight. Um, so we have uh, Jund uh, showing up in fifth place, piloted by Eric Rose. Um, and then we have Green Tron, piloted by uh, Louis Falsigno. Um so congrats to both of those local players showing up in the top eight. Um, and uh, per, per Jordan, uh, former host of At Your End Step, uh, and notable uh, Tron enthusiast, uh, notable Karn enthusiast, I should say. Uh, Karn 2016, feel the Karn. <laughs> <laughs> um, he definitely has uh, given his uh, opinion that, that this is definitely the, the place to start going forward with, uh, with Tron post-rotation. So... You know, take his opinion however you want. You might think that he is right or wrong, but that's what opinions are for. I figured I should pass it along. And uh, but yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, congratulations to them. Uh, you know, we've you know personally run into these you know players around the the local tournament scene here, and it's awesome to see names we know. Uh, I also like so because I know this has been a, a point of contention in our local community. Uh, Good job, with Louie. Also getting there with them Carplusion forests. <laughs> yeah, no Take joke. Take that seventy dollar lands. Yeah, who needs Grove of the Burnwells, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, Tron literally, like Karn is like, I don't even care. Uh, I know, it's still good enough. Like it doesn't even matter. Just, just cast me. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, super, uh, I'm, 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 I'm assuming that he's glad. <laughs> I'm assuming that he's glad to get paired against you know the seventh place burn player or the eighth place affinity player. <laughs> <laughs> or the the third place. Well, you know, he might have gotten, uh, <laughs> might have gotten paired against one of these, you know, aggressive players. But I guess maybe it doesn't matter. I just want to point out, uh, Justin Reich is yeah, another. He, he beat uh, Affinity in top eight, just you know. Oh, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> okay, fair enough. There <laughs> you go. Yeah, yeah. Justin, uh, he won the or Comic Town had an IQ the week before on last Sunday, uh, and he actually won that event with this list. Uh, I, I don't have both right next to me, so I don't know if there are any changes. Um, I do believe he was playing Blood Moon last week in addition to Crumble the Dust. He was also playing Gideons in the sideboard last week, and he's not playing those. Um, but I actually uh, highlighted that list uh, in an article I wrote for ComicTown.net. Uh, it came out this last Monday, if you want to go take a read. Um, but sort of broke down how I, I thought Jeskai was another deck that could stand to make some gains. And, uh, you know, Dave, you mentioned how many burn decks in the top 16? Uh, five. I, 
playing is right. playing lightning helixes with Snapcaster Mage probably feels like a pretty good position then. You know, like they, they have a real hard time killing like a Restoration Angel, which is very good already. And then if you're just like, oh, Helix, you know, your guide, and then like Snapcaster Helix this, I mean, you're getting ahead while also like it's essentially it's kind of like discard a card, you know, kill your creature, you know, like that sort of effect. So, um, and a Johnny also like having, you know, he has two copies of Johnny Vengeance, which is another way to come down and, and do that. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like with, you know, twin sort of gone, you know, maybe there's room for this kind of deck to move in. I think, yeah, I mean, we're seeing definitely a lack of unfair decks, especially in this top 16. Um, there's really not, I guess you can count infect as, Probably an unfair deck since it can kill in turn three. I mean, Tron's an unfair deck, right? Yeah. It, no, it, it is. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tron, Tron's an yeah, unfair yeah, deck. Yeah, Tron's unfair. And, and, and I, I would imagine that he has he has a tough time with Tron. But I, but I, I mean, too. And that's why he has three Carmel Dust instead of Blood Moon last week, too. So sort of interesting. Yeah. Right. I think it's interesting that I think that um, uh, Blood Moon, I think, has lo- lost a lot of its power in all honesty. Um, you have no power here. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, the lands decks are, are now changed. Where Blood Moon was obviously king for Amulet, but, you know, was so so against Tron. And now that there, you know, is no Amulet, well, then you're going to play Crumble the Dust. You're going to play, you know, the Sewing Salt effects because they're just far more powerful uh, against, you know, the Tron decks. So I think that's interesting. And, like, people had, had already written about that. I think uh, Cedric Phil especially, like, wrote about that as, uh, you know, saying that that's why, you know, there wasn't going to be this huge resurgence in Tron because, you know, the land hate that people play is going to change. Yeah, and it's interesting. I, I will say that there were, what, I think, four Tron decks in top 16 of this event as well. So, eh. But, uh, you know, it's important that, you know, these mana bases, like these Jeskai mana bases, like, some yeah, they will play Blood Moon to try and get people, but they really don't benefit from Blood Moon being the format. They, they generally get really punished by it. So it's mm-hmm. probably in, you know, these sort of decks' best interest that Blood Moon sort of loses some of its appeal. Yeah, like, I always thought it was awkward, like, like seeing these, like, three-color decks playing Blood Moon. Like, even when I was playing, you know, Grixis Delver, Blood Moon was just an awkward card because a lot of the times I would only have two of my colors. Yeah, you would almost never have black in time. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think that, you know, that, that, that deck definitely gains by... And what, what, I, what I mean by unfair decks is, like, combo decks. So like, Grishol Brand, I would imagine, is probably not very good for it. Uh, we don't see any of that here. Uh, obviously, there's no more Amulet Bloom to keep it down. So I do think Jeskai Control, you know, gains gains a lot uh, from the shift in the format. But we really haven't seen, like, anything really take the place of Twin, I feel like. I feel like it's just, like, the same format. You just take those two decks out. And then I it's mean, kinda... the deck, the format's definitely been more aggressive, which is interesting, uh, you know, because I don't know if Twin was you know, was the deck that was really keeping those decks in check. Um, so that's sort of interesting. I, I, I do, uh, you know, there's a couple of cards I think stand to gain, and we've seen some price increases on those cards. Um uh, I, Morgan, you got a really good deal this weekend. Oh, for uh, what? Crucible? Yeah, Worlds? and that card is you know up over sixty. Yeah, now. it's definitely sixty plus dollars. I think Chase Andre said this week it's like the sixth most expensive card in modern. And if you look at it, if you're trying to beat the Tron decks, then like Crucible Ghost Quarter is a pretty solid plan. Uh, so you've seen that card start showing up a lot of sideboards. Uh, you know, we talk about these unfair decks too. Like one of the more common sideboard effects. You, know, if you don't see them all in this top eight, if you go look on like like MTG Goldfish and look, like you see things like Surgical Extraction gaining a lot of traction in conjunction with this, and a lot of those like those decks are like like the Grizzle Brand deck is really powerful. You you go ahead and Surgical like Grizzle Brand though, that deck's probably not doing a lot. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's gonna try and kill you with Borgos or maybe like land a fifteen fifteen guy. Borgos enraged. Or Varigmos enraged. Mad Bobo. <laughs> Mad Bobo. <laughs> Mad Bobo. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, but that deck becomes a lot less powerful. And, you know, so you you see, you know, the, you know, some of the sideboard effects becoming maybe a little bit more, you know, before where you had like Blood Moon, you saw like Stony Silence being very important, but maybe some of these sideboard effects become a little bit more robust and a little bit more, you know, a, a little less narrow, I guess, with the way the four hats opening up. So I think the Pro Tour is going to be really exciting. I, you know, I think a lot of people are afraid of it, but if you look at any indication, like, Again, look at how many people this modern, you know, classic had compared to the Legacy Classic. And I'm sorry, Legacy players, you know, this isn't, I'm not trying to bash on anybody, but modern is the winner here. You know, if you look at the regionals pre, you know, uh, pre-regs I talked about, it, it's pretty big. Uh, so, I, you know, I think the, the excitement for this format in this weekend is going to, you know, be pretty, pretty interesting. Do you want to hear the breakdown? Yeah, give me the breakdown. So the, mo- <laughs> the modern classic had 260 players. And the Legacy Classic had, sorry, I didn't have that pulled up. 
98 players. So, I mean, now if you're a legacy player, you know what I mean. It, at this point, you've got to, you know they're going to keep supporting these events, and they're definitely like, you know that that's pretty good value. You know what I mean? Like obviously, not winning cash out of it anymore, but you have a good chance of prizing in that event. You know, so what? Like a third we, of the players. The are prizes prizing. are the same. Yeah. So I mean, and, and like you know, it's nice. They said you know, you're walking away as legacy. You know, <laughs> let's be honest. A legacy finals is finishing up when you were walking away, and. Had Joe Lissette in it, <laughs> so it means that event happened real early, you know. And I'm not trying to take a shot at you know Joe Lissette, but sort of notorious for being a bit slow with that deck, you know what I mean. And yeah. other players are even slower with like miracles and that sort of thing. So a format, you know, that probably benefits from having a less round than the others. So yeah, sure. Uh, it, it's just interesting to see how you know like people have sort of been very down on where, where modern might be going but say like at least that's the public perception but i think that's really coming from a lot of the pros and, may, and maybe you know i don't disagree now maybe maybe it isn't time to keep it where it's at in the pro tour format just because of the way they messed with the standard rotation but you, you can't ignore the fact that the player base really seems to be responding to modern events you know, just go look at the numbers for the last few months the gps you know, all the issues they had in pittsburgh and everything else people uh, want to play this I, format i would imagine we're going to see a huge turnout for detroit next month <laughs> So. I'm going to say this again. Regionals is capped this weekend. Right. So pre-register. Yeah. If you, if you want to play, make sure you uh, get ahead and do that. So real quick, I just want to talk about um, my experience. I play, I did play in the Modern Classic, and uh, I was trying kind of a, a new version of the same old stuff that I always play in Modern, which is just blue-red tempo decks, basically. Um, no Delvers this week. I uh, decided to go really hard on prowess so um basically played blue red, blue red prowess and standard and uh, blue red prowess and modern um so i was playing you know four four monastery swiss spears four storm chaser mage four abbot of carol keep um some snapcasters I, I was i wanted to try out jorian to see if jorian was good uh, so i played two jorians in my deck and then played uh 10 zero cost cards so i played uh four Gitaxian Probe, four Mishra's Bobbles, uh, and two Gut Shots in the main to just <laughs> get uh, more prowess, you know, more triggers for Jorian. Um, so uh, other than that, just the standard stuff, you know, bolts and remands and stuff like that. So, uh, But, yeah, I ended up going six and three again. So, <laughs> so both tournaments, I went six and three and won nothing. Um, this one was a little bit more heartbreaking because uh, in the standard open, and I had was X and three, and then I won the last two rounds to kind of, you know, go out that way. But uh, modern, I, I definitely was X two and like lost in the last round. And I really wanted to to make top sixteen just so I could put Jorian on the map <laughs> in modern. That was kind of my goal. I was like, right, I'm going to put Jorian on the map, but uh, didn't quite get there. Uh, really lost hard to um, Zach Schmidt, who ended up finishing fifteenth uh, in his burn deck. Just it was oh, just a, no, you would have done it. I, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, I've had, I I lost two very not close games uh, <laughs> to him. So uh, the, deck, the deck was fun, um, definitely had some issues. Um, it's a very like offensive, I mean, when you're playing prowess, you want to play spells on your own turn, obviously, to, to make your creatures big. And was able to, you know, consistently do 10 plus damage, you know, in one turn, just with multiple prowess creatures. Um, Storm Chaser Rage was pretty good, you know, having haste. Having those and Swiss Spears lets you just kind of come out of nowhere. You know, we could play like two, you know, two creatures a spell, maybe a zero casting cost thing, um, and deal just like bursts of damage. Um, but it was very bad at playing uh, playing defense. So, you know, my losses were against the Green Raid Scape Shift, Burn, which is another deck that you you need to be playing defensively against because um, you can't really race them, um, and Bogles, which is just basically a straight up race. <laughs> Um, so I wonder if the right build for that deck, and I have no idea, and it would take some time to test. But I do wonder if the right build of that deck, if you're playing the prowess version, is actually rug, like, and you're supposed to play like four um, mutagenic growths, and you're supposed to play like become a men's sister, like your your signature spell in that deck. I, w I wonder if that's how you're supposed to build that deck. But then I I don't know if that's just like a worse version of the deck. Yeah, that that was kind of my thinking. Like I, I did think of that, and like I think if you're gonna play rug, like you probably just want to play Tarmogoyf because it's just. Like that's what Chapin played when he when he played the right, uh, right, right. you know Mishra's Bobble deck, and uh, Mishra's Bobble and Tarmogoyf go pretty well together, because um, you don't normally get an, an artifact in the yard. But uh, I don't know. It, it's kind of a different deck at that point. Um, 
I guess, I guess the, the, I guess the good thing is, is you have a lot of options. Like, there's so many two drops that you want to play. I only ended <laughs> up playing three Snapcaster mages just because I couldn't fit all the two drops in. You know, um, so I mean, it, it was, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, and like, definitely got some some compliments from some of my opponents. Like, oh man, it's like a really cool deck. Like, was able to get Jorian going, you know, a couple times throughout the day, and it was, like felt really good when I got it going. Um, there were some matchups where it being like a three casting cost creature just wasn't great, like against you know Scape Shift. It's like this. I just want to kind of kill them as fast as possible. <laughs> I don't need a two three that you know for three mana, but um, definitely definitely pretty cool. Um, I posted the I put the list on my on my Twitter, so if anybody wants to see what that looks like, uh, that's what I played. Uh, moving forward, I, I'm probably going to go back to a more traditional Delver deck. I think that's what I plan on playing this weekend. So, um, but uh, I, I may I may continue to work on the prowess, just prowess version in the future. But uh, you know, it was something a little different. I mean, you know, with uh, you know everything kind of opening up in modern, it gives you a chance to play something a little bit different and test out some new stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, that's essentially what I was doing. I was just I was testing it. I hadn't tested the deck, and I wanted to see how good Storm Chaser Mage and Jorian would be in modern, and they were they were pretty good, but. I, I think the just the the build of the deck wasn't great for the field, so I'll say that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, we'll kind of see where the where the format goes with the Pro Tour. Yeah, you know, with the Pro Tour coming up this weekend, I think we really need to uh, sort of take that focus that direction. So, do we want to kick off our Pro Tour preview? Yeah, let's go ahead and move into it. Um, so the you know Pro Tour is going to be modern, um, as we've already you know kind of discussed at length um, within the you know modern classic. But you know this is going to be you know the first time that we get a real sort of you know premier level, a lot of pros invested in you know pushing the format to its limits. Um, you know there's a lot of money on the line, so a lot of you know a lot more money than we would see in a you know let's say in a Star City Games Open or something like that. So. A lot of you know people trying to encourage to you know break modern as it stands right now. So we kind of wanted to you know take a look at you know the format as a whole and kind of guesstimate uh, you know give our best uh, inclinations to see what we would see there um, and what we think will do well. So you know one of the first questions that we have to ask ourselves is um, you know what decks do we do we expect the big teams to play? You know the um, you know, the, the Starry City Games, you know, team, whatever that is. I mean, the, the whole team's aspect has kind of fallen to the wayside, I think, a lot in a lot of ways. You really don't see it anymore, uh-huh. um, at least, like, um, you know, preemptively. I mean, I'm sure once, you know, the, the Pro Tours are in full swing, we'll, we'll know who, you know, tested with who and what team they formed. Yeah. But I feel like you don't have a lot of, like, you know, Starry City Game is really... Um, you know, pimping their team or anything like that. Or... No, they, they made a distinct move away from that, which I thought was interesting. A lot yeah. of their members are actually a part of, like, Channel Fireball and Pantheon when they test for these, so it's sort of interesting. Right. Yeah, I, coverage, will, I, I, I kind of disagree because coverage is actually going towards teams more. I, I'd noticed on the GP coverage that they would have, like, the player's name, and then underneath it was, like, what team that they belong to, you know, team face-to-face, Channel Fireball, Right, so, and, whatever. like, we had to assess, like, so, major teams, obviously a fire, Channel Fireball, yeah. and, and, you know, Channel Fireball Classic or whatever, yeah. and you have Team Pantheon, which is the other, you know, which is, was, what, more of the Source City people from Channel Fireball before? Wasn't that it? Or am I getting the, this pa- the Pantheon? Or am I getting that backwards? Because the Pantheon is one that had, like, like Owen and... It's like Owen and Reed Duke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was a lot of people who came over from Star City in the, after Finkel. that first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you have Eureka, uh, which is... which Or I, Team Cabin Crew or Eureka yeah, or yeah. Wh- whatever it is. Which is, I, I saw that like uh, Martin Dang said he was playing for the team, right? And But he mm-hmm. also was wearing an MTG Mint card. So I guess that that's not a team now, like or he's not part of that team anymore despite wearing that. Uh, then you have, yeah, you have Team Face to Face. You have MTG Mint card. Yeah, like you have MTG said. Mint card, uh, which... And then you also have... Uh, what's the team that... um. Uh, the, the French team, um, the the Toro also uh, Revolution. Part. Thank you, Team Revolution. I don't know if they're a thing anymore. I thought they were. You had like the Seif, and you had her, and you had. Um... This, this is why I'm saying that no one yeah, cares yeah. about teams anymore. You're like, well, I don't even know. Well, well, I'm just saying they're going to push it hard. But I think I think they will care once it's there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's that's also what I'm trying to say. Like we 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 don't really know what who's testing with who right now, but right. once oh, it's you're there, team, they'll you're hype Ultra it. Pro. That's, Ultra that's Pro, actually yeah. a thing. So that is yeah, that is that is true. Yeah, I mean, and Team Ramrod. 
Car ramrod. Yeah, ramrod. Just say it once. Um, <laughs> no, but going back to the question, uh, what decks I expect to see. Uh, so last year's Modern Pro Tour, I believe the Pantheon all played Blue Green Infect. And I think that that is a deck, we just saw it win the Modern Classic, and I think it's a deck that's pretty well positioned going forward, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him run it back. Now, obviously, a lot of these teams are going to be trying a bunch of different decks, but I wouldn't be surprised if they fell back on Infect as just being like, you know what, this is, at this point, the most unfair, consistent deck that we can play in the format now. So um, I expect Infect to be pretty big at the Pro Tour. Um, like we said, Jeskai, I think, yeah. will, will be a little bit... Yeah, I think Jeskai Control is going to make a big comeback. I, and I think even even if that big comeback is in the, the hands of Sean McLaren and Sean McLaren only, <laughs> uh, I, I think that, like, you know, if people... So if people are assuming, like, okay, Infinity is great, you know, Infect is great, I want to play the deck that gets to play Lightning Bolt, Path to Exile, Lightning Helix, and Snapcaster Mage. Like, I, I, I want to do these things. Uh, so, you know, and that, and that, I think, is in sort of going back into the wheelhouse of a lot of these players. You know what I mean? They, you'll, you'll see some of them wanting to settle into that sort of control role. Uh, so if, if a control deck exists, I think it's just guy that's coming back. You know, Grixis is fine, but Grixis, unfortunately, just doesn't have... The way they've been constructed doesn't seem to have a way to beat, like, the Tron decks. And I'm not saying Jeskai is a great matchup against it, but I do think you get a little bit more sideboard options and you get better affinity hate out of the you know, that deck with Stony Silence. So. Yeah. I actually would be not surprised to see Storm make a big comeback. In the hands of one uh, John Finkel? <laughs> yeah, John Finkel and Kai. They pretty much always play Storm if they can. Though I think Finkel did play Infect last year. It was like su- it was surprising. He's played Storm to like a lot of top 16s in modern Pro Tours. So, right. so. Um, but I think Storm is like a deck that really people aren't super prepared for anymore because it's not really a top tier deck anymore. Um, I did play against it at the Classic, and it was there in some numbers, but it just hasn't put up the results. But I think when you talk about the best players in the world, especially people like John Fingal, who are like just masters of playing that deck, uh, you know, I, I, I don't I, I would not be shocked to see it, it make a comeback. Um, as far as, you know, maybe a deck that uh, a lot of people never really think about, but always can kind of show up and, and do some damage, um, potentially if no one's really like prepared for it is ad nauseum. Um, if you want to talk about combo decks that, um, don't necessarily, um, see a lot of play, but are, can be pretty good and have like, you know, histories of, of showing up, you know, maybe in the hands of people who may or may not have been playing the game in a legal way, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, it's still capable of, of putting up wins. Um, and it's been something that's been very under the radar that has caused a lot of people to kind of forget about it. Um, I, I don't mind, you know, taking a look at that as being something that might surprise you over the weekend. My, my only issue with that is just how weak that deck is to, for one, infect specifically. Like, most of its cards that are designed to not die to regular ways uh, do not get around infect, actually. That's very true. Proxy on life? Oh, no, you're still just dead. Oh, uh, angels are, oh, no, actually still just dead. Uh, so, like, you know, you know, there's a game for having that, oh, well, that doesn't matter. You actually, yeah, it still is a game for this reason. Right. So, I, I so think that's like, you, awkward, it, but you are right. It is sort of a combo deck that operates on a little bit different access. Hmm. And, yeah, people were, people were always, like, woefully unprepared for it. Like, I was, my, my opponent's always just like, uh, like, you know, Cast Pentad Prism, and I'm like, oh, I hope my hand can play with this deck. Oh, God. <laughs> right, and, like, let's say that, you know, it turns out that, you know, Infect isn't the, you know, the un- the unfair deck people are playing, it's Burn. Well, then, you know, Ad Nauseam might have a little bit better of a showing. Then, for example, life is actually just a delusions of mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's just something that um, I know a lot of people have not really talked about, but I know a lot of pros, always, I, I feel like I'll always have that card, always have that deck on the on the radar as potentially being something that could be busted. Now, I think our next question we have up here is, do we think there'll be any new decks uh, debuted at this Pro Tour? And, and I, and I want to mention here, and I've sort of been on this deck a little bit talking about it, I do think if you're going to get a you know the best or a tuned version of the, the Eldrazi deck, I think this is where you're going to see it. And if you look at what that deck can do, you, know, you mentioned Storm might be a popular choice. Well, that deck gets to play a ton of main deck ways to just rip apart a person's hand and graveyard. You know, making that matchup really rough for the Storm player. Uh, when you look at some of these, you know, some of the other fair decks, you know that you know, even some of the aggressive decks, like you're playing four Lingering Souls and and four Blight Herders, where they're just like, oh, those are cute kitties. Here's nine creatures to deal with. And you're like, uh, okay, hold on. 
You know what I mean? So the, the deck operates on, on a really strange access compared to the rest of the format. Plus, it has some of the tools that you'll even fight against, like, the Tron decks. Now, the mana bases have been clunky, and it does not exactly have any sort of fixing to smooth out draws. So it can be a little... Yo, know, I don't know, unkempt. You know, if you look at it, you're like, well, you need a little haircut, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but I do think if you're looking at a deck that can sort of like, you know, be set up to do well against a fair amount of the format, I, I you know, if there's going to be a deck like that, I think that's the deck that can show up and be tuned. And, and I do feel at least one team is going to be on that deck. Now, do you, do you really consider that a new deck at this point? I know it is fairly new because of the just the Eldrazi cards. And... I think for the base of this question, it's as new as I think we can really discuss. Because like looking at Oath, like, I don't know if you're going to, I don't think anything has come around that's going to say new archetype. You know what I mean? E everything at this point is just a variation of other things. But, you know, Eldrazi is the closest thing to a brand new archetype we've seen in a while. Right. So so the ones that we have seen have been based black, mm -hmm. right? And we've seen, you know, black-white versions. I actually would be interested to see if there's, like, another color, like maybe, like, a mono-red Eldrazi or something like that, you know, that just plays, like, a big red deck. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's interesting, you know, because with the, you know, if you were just looking at the battle versions before Oath was released, you know, I would have said, no, nah, I don't think so, because you really want Wasteland Strangler. And that card does a lot of work, let me tell you. Uh, but, you know, I, I could see that. I, you know, I, I I still think base black is going to be the main option, but there's a couple other cool things. You know, we mentioned interactions on here before that are sort of cute. You know, obviously black white gets path and gets lingering souls and gets timely reinforcements. Black red gets things like crumble to dust to really make you know shore up those matchups. Plus lightning bolt is sufficient removal. Black blue gets cool things like Ashiok and delay, which is really really insane. <laughs> You're like, oh delay, put time counters on that. Cast my blight herder. Oh, and the blight herder is a cast trigger. So even if they try to like counter the blight herder, doesn't matter. The delay was still a better counter spell because it only costs the blue to call this. Yeah. So that's you know, pretty good. So I, I could definitely see that. Um, I you know if you looked this week, uh, I think it was Chris Van Meter on CBM so put up a uh, black a, green a black green list uh, playing for Worldbreaker, and I was like, oh hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, look and like also I was playing like abrupt decay, which, yeah. you know, as its removal spell of choice, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so you know, I think I think you're not wrong. I think there's definitely other ways to get it. Now, if you look at the metagame standings and like you know goldfish standings, that black white has been the version that has been putting up any sort of numbers and that it also includes paper tournaments. But again, it doesn't mean that some you know, pro team hasn't been like, Haha, we're just waiting for now. <laughs> Our tentacles have been waiting and now here they come. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, like there, there's a lot of raw power in it. And uh, when you put that in front of anyone, people are going to want it. What? They're going to start grunting at you. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Allen dot deck. <laughs> uh, what does the Eldrazi deck need? More power. <laughs> arr, 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 arr. <laughs> um, sure, we could go. We can go that. We can go that pathway. Uh, uh, yeah, they're gonna uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor, uh, the Eldrazi deck up, um, and hopefully no one's gonna be an Al Borland for him and tell him they gotta shut it down. <laughs> anyway, um, that would be the only like you know, quote-unquote, you know, new, newish archetype. How about that? Newish archetype that I could see, you know, coming out. Yeah, I mean, I think there haven't been a lot of, like, over the course of the modern Pro Tours, there haven't been a lot of surprises. There have been, like, some cool iterations. I remember a couple of years ago we had, like, the Jun deck that was playing. Uh, you could play Deathrite Shaman at that point. So it had Deathrite Shamans and, like, Drops Messengers and stuff in it with Bloodbraid Elf. Mm -hmm. It's like, that was... At the time, that wasn't like a thing, so that was like kind of a new twist. So, I, I will throw it now. This is an old deck that I could see making, you know, because a lot of the same people are in this pro tour. There was a modern deck a few years ago that had a huge day one buzz, a huge splash, playing. Uh, well, oh, shoot, it wasn't Blister Coil weird. It was the, oh, what New Magic uh, Elemental? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there is now a one three that we just talked about. Maybe that's the card. It's just like, oh, I'm gonna get all these Storm Prowess triggers, and then I'm gonna go off. Just saying, maybe that deck gets some new life where it's like, hey, we got a new, we got a new buddy. Time to high five. Yeah, maybe <laughs> we get you know, <laughs> blue red, uh, Niv Magis Elemental, Storm Chaser Mage. Uh, they the, the played the the cat too. The the O one that gate got to uh, plus two plus. Oh, when you played a spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had like didn't have a Kiln, Kiln Fiend. Fiend. That, yeah. That's a one two, and then yeah. No so. Kiln Fiend. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I mean, you know, if you if you think the format's going to be hyper aggressive decks like Affinity and Infect that don't have a lot of interaction, maybe you just try to find a different way to race them. So, <laughs> I, you know, and Slip Through Space also makes that deck sort of intriguing as well because it's just like, oh, uh, I'm just going to make this unblockable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't mention that uh, Danny Jessup did play Slip Through Space in his Infect deck, so that's oh, also yeah. kind of gross. Card sweet. 
Um, uh, we also have to, for the blue-red deck, you, you do have a new land for it as well. You have a man land, technically. Not sure if you actually play it. <laughs> yeah, but... I don't know if you would play that yeah. one. They have to but you do have you it? Get to five mana. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, hey, if it's a playable blue-red deck... Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's a deck that, it. I mean, maybe like Brad Nelson and them have learned their lesson and they will never show up to another modern pro tour within the Vegas Elemental. But if you if you bought it in the last time and they've just been sitting there all dusty, maybe it's your time. So, what, what was, <laughs> maybe you did it. You you pulled off the long con. What was the uh, what was the reason why that deck ultimately failed? Because it was remember? like the jundiest pro tour ever, wasn't it? Like that, okay. they were just like they just like totally predicted a wrong thing and just like got blown out by removal spells over and over again. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, what was it last year? So Infect was played a lot. And it, I think it was Abzan, right? I believe Eric Froelich top aided with Abzan last time. And Abzan was like a pretty big, like Lingering Souls was a the big card of, of the yes. last Pro Tour. The last, last modern Pro Tour. So um, I'm, I'm just going off, of, I'm going off of memory here. I'm, going I'm off looking, the dome here. I'm looking at the deck tech night now of the uh, Elemental Combo with Jerry Thompson. <laughs> Uh, so it had two Flamekin Harbinger, uh, four Kiln Fiend, four Nevagus Elemental. I think those are the only creatures. And nice. this deck was sweet. Uh, I had four Gutshot, four Taxi Probe, four Mutagenic Growth, four Apostles Blessing. Oh, man. That's going hard. Man, why wasn't this deck playing um, Mishra's Bobble? Death Shadow? Oh, man. Pain so much life. This deck's a thing. <laughs> I think it was playing Assault Probe, too, wasn't it? Assault Strobe. Assault Strobe. Yeah, Assault Double probe. Strike. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You can play Team of Battle Rage <laughs> Sorry. now. That, uh, ta- yeah, four Tainted Strike, because Infect was a way to win. And, uh, well, and then two Assault stro- or pro- Strobe, <laughs> three Thoughtseize, and then, uh, he- Jerry, move your head. Four Ground Rift. <laughs> yeah, Ground Rift. That was the Storm. <laughs> that was the Storm Storm card. can't block yeah. thing. Yeah. But then you could so eat all the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the deck, I mean, deck is, didn't get, have anything banned from it, so maybe it's time. <laughs> it's time. Hey, if that if that does well, that some, for some reason that deck shows up in force, God. man, we called it. <laughs> if that does well, I just I, I'm gonna get a T-shirt. <laughs> also, uh, <laughs> you could just probably buy all of that deck for like twenty bucks and a ham sandwich. Uh, hey, so. Thoughtseize is in it, so. Oh well. I mean, excuse me. I mean, uh, it's no Inquisition of Kozilek. Uh, the, the it's not like you need is, those. Oh, the mana base is really expensive. Oh no. It's four Black Cleave Cliffs, three Blood Crypt, four Scalding Tard, four Urd Mesa, and four Gemstone Mines. Okay, well. <laughs> so when that deck was played originally, those cards Two were probably like th- those cards are probably reasonable that that well, was, that was what, now 25 bucks a piece yeah so, uh, just interesting play, who cares just play sulfurous springs it's the same <laughs> i mean if you could play carplusion forest of tron you could play sulfur springs and uh, if we're playing death shadow we want it oh yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you stop listening to this point i don't buy we, we, <laughs> it's all right we don't blame did, you like, i'm bit. sorry i did this but it's it's the card that popped in my head and i was just like man this deck could be a thing we got a little bit off our rails it's oh okay. man i mean we're still talking about a modern Cyborg deck had four clout of the Dom- dominions Dom- i can't dominus? read dominus that's it oh man <laughs> deck is sweet that was definitely like the jankiest deck to be played by it like, was super jank. like, by, like by name players and a team. Uh, this is why Star City doesn't have a team anymore. Star City was like, you guys, we gave you money. We gave you money. You did <laughs> this. Like, Sorry, guys, we still can't sell these did, cards. Did so. you <laughs> like? Did you treat this seriously at all? And they're like, why? It was cool. And they're like, no. no. You know what? You know what? I told. I warned you that if you didn't, you know, find a real job, you couldn't just live here and mooch anymore. Get out. <laughs> is that why Jerry moved to Seattle? Yeah, 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 yeah. kicks him out. Kicks he, him out of the band. He actually left with a leather jacket and his motorcycle. <laughs> Jerry, I'm sorry for that. randomly listen to this. <laughs> anyway, um, so we already kind of talked about this, but um, as far as archetype wise, what do we think are you know sort of our predictions for the best performing archetype? John and Abzan. Yeah. Just, huh. See, we talk about all these crazy things, but those decks, like, if you look, look at the, all of the modern events we've had so far, all of the burn, all of this and that, and yet Jund has been in every top eight, every single one. Like, it, the, the deck just, you know, it doesn't matter that it lost twin as a matchup, you know, if you are playing efficient removal and efficient counter spells and Tarmogoyf, you probably are still going to do okay. So I feel like that, for a lot of teams, that's still a baseline, and, you know, you might see some variations, you know, I saw, I think it was, who, who wrote the article today? Uh, I have to go look. I think it was really idle. Uh, yeah. We were talking about including colorless in them and playing like Thought Not Seer, right? Uh, which is pretty gross <laughs> in those decks. So you could see variations, but I do think like, you know, BGX, you know, is just is consistent one of those best performer archetypes. Yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with, uh, 
zoo variants. I think. Um, oh, the zoo! Yeah, we actually saw zero zoo decks in the in the top sixteen with the modern classic, but it, it's been a deck that's been pretty consistent, pretty pretty good. I mean, whether it be Naya Company, which is kind of like a variation of Zoo, or more of like the Patrick Sullivan, uh, you know, really aggressive Zoo list with like Eidolons and stuff in it. I think some version of Zoo um, will do pretty well, and I think overall it'll be a, a good performer. I think it's just, it's too customizable, uh, and, and, and feel like the Pro Tour, I think like a lot of the teams are going to get, you know, I think a lot of the teams are going to pretty much know like what's going to be played and i think like when you you get a you know a good team together to figure out you know how to crack the format pat cox skewed for the store right uh probably all right yeah sure i, I can go i can get in with that <laughs> <laughs> um craig Gosco, yeah <laughs> so i'm gonna play a little bit off of mike's uh prediction so if i if you say that green black x is going to be good then i think burn is going to be a good performing archetype at that point um, the old I, Sperling special. Yeah, I mean, why not? Um, in all honesty, so like we we I think we all think that yeah, you know, Indefect or Burn are sort of kind of the um, going to be well positioned going into the Pro Tour. But I think if Black Green X is better uh, suited, then I think that they have a better matchup against uh, Infect than they do Burn. I, I, it could be close either way. In all now, honesty, if they go the Absent variant though, then it gets a little tricky. It does get a little because it could be Kitchen Finks and Siege Rhinos. Now, granted, you lose the removal, so but Lingering Soul still ends up being really good against Infect. Uh, yeah, so. very true. Um, so uh, I'm gonna go with Burn. I'm gonna hedge on on that on that end of the of the train uh, rather than going Infect, uh, just because I think that. Um, uh, you know, judging from the you know Columbus Open, the uh, the Columbus Open, the Columbus Classic that we had, you know, Burn was definitely well represented. I mean, in fact, definitely won the tournament. But you can't you know discount the fact that Burn's still just a really good deck. So we're talking in circus and telling you that there's a lot of decks that are possible, and Modern's great. Yeah, yeah, that's the nice <laughs> thing about it. I mean, <laughs> so we could be saying all these things, but still something come out of left field and like dominate the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> um or like you know maybe you know this is the the tournament for tron i, I don't see that you know being the case tron is still going to be you know a, a good deck it's still going to be a contender but people know that so it's very hard to like not be prepared for it um i think like it, it it's proven though i mean i think tron is a, a huge target on it right now yeah and it's still been doing pretty well in the you know in the couple of tournaments that we've had so I mean I think Tron will do okay, but I think in general like the pros don't really like to play decks like that because yeah. it's kind yeah, of all that's in. That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't see like a PV playing, you know, like Tron. You know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. Now granted, he played like a Tarker right at the last one, but even that he said like it's sort of like not in normal wheelhouse. It's just so. well, well, the difference there is a Tarker Red was the version that that he played, and, and I guess it's pretty similar to the, to the same version that we have now, but it's it's still, like, pretty skill-intensive. Like, you still oh, have no, to I'm know when to go that. for I'm it. I'm saying no, it's not. I think but, Tron can be very skill-intensive. It, it, it can be, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's just, like, get your Tron going, cast big thing. I mean, sure, there there is some skill, but I think for the most part, like, you're not going to have too many decisions to make with that deck. And, Whereas, like, I'm from... You know what I am inferring. I think a lot of Tron is like a lot of the time playing around hate um, is is where like a lot of the skill comes in and mm-hmm. and and lines based around what um, you know what your opponent is trying to do to you to knock you off of your game plan. Um, and then like in, in general, like what what's the best threat for each matchup? Like what are you actually yeah. trying to do? Yeah, I mean that's that's really one of the biggest skills in modern that you can have is just knowing knowing the metagame, knowing the format. Knowing what what how people are going to try to attack whatever deck that you're playing, it's can, is huge because if you can anticipate what they're going to do, then you can kind of next level. Okay, yeah. so they're going to bring in this. I'm going to do this instead. Um, and I think uh, for people that play a lot of modern, I think you can get a lot of percentage points mm-hmm. um, in doing that. Yeah, but I definitely don't agree with you. Uh, excuse me, I definitely don't disagree with you is what I meant to say about like pros wanting to play something as, you know, linear as Tron or something like that. They, they, I don't, they, we just don't see that happening very often. Right. Um, and when it does, it has to be like the, you know, the, the deck with the um, overwhelmingly better win percentage or something like that, which I'm sure Tarka Red was for, you know, the last pro tour. So it's just like, um, and with modern, you know, you're going to have, you're not going to, there's just no deck that's just like, oh, this is clearly the overwhelming deck unless you just like break it, which, you know, when that happens, we usually just see something getting banned afterwards. So, um, 
I don't. I, I mean, I hope that doesn't happen. Um, it'd be kind of cool to see, but then like something gets banned. <laughs> oh, I know. If like the Eldrazi like randomly like took the event by storm, and like I move and something spiked, and just be like. Got a hot black white old drowsy deck for sale. <laughs> Going to... First come, first serve. <laughs> step right up, step right up. <laughs> hot deck here. <laughs> it's like you're selling peanuts at a baseball game. <laughs> Get the top performing deck at the Pro Tour. Get it out while it's hot. <laughs> These uh, prices won't last, mainly because they'll go down. Because they're going to get banned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I think for better or for worse, I mean, the metagame is going to be set. By this pro tour, I mean, it's kind of the the format's been in a state of flux over the last couple of weeks since the bannings, and you're really going to see basically what the what the meta game is going to look like and where we're going to go from here you know, after this pro tour. So I'm mean, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, me too. I I think the modern pro tours are always a lot of fun, and I think like um uh, even the limited format, I think OGW might be OGW BFZ might be interesting to to kind of you know uh, watch, especially since a lot of the decks that people create aren't necessarily synergy based and they're more of a you know, typical draft format. And I think that is better for coverage rather than just like pure synergy based decks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if we're picking players, can't go wrong with Lee Shi Tien. He top eights like every modern pro tour. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's 100%. Hey, his, right? his deck's still fine, right? He can still play Just Guy Sensei combo, correct? Uh, no, he was play, he played Burn at the last. Oh, last did he? Year. Yeah. Did he he? Well, maybe player. he can play Just Guy Sensei combo again. Yeah. I mean, I, I, if I'm going to pick a guy, I'm going to go with the Canadian Crusher, Sean McLaren. <laughs> Sean McLaren. Yeah. <laughs> Modern's been his format, and if Jess guy's good, that guy's probably he's, good. He's going to have a seance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I really wish. Oh, man, if he just did that, I, I'd have so much, like, I'd have, like, a simultaneous, like, huge amount of respect for him and no respect at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that's possible, but that's the feeling. Oh, um, man, I, I don't even know. It, it's so hard to, uh, you know, really see who has, like, a beat on the format. Like, um... So if like Black Green X is going to be like the top the, the the top dog, then like you can't go wrong with like like Willie Idol or even like Eric Froelich, who did really well with a Black Green X deck, you know, last Modern Pro Tour. Um, but I don't. know. Someone's going to do well. I'm going to. You did say. it. <laughs> what are those Morgan's two? Morgan's a magician. <laughs> Maybe some kind of wizard. I don't know. Got some weird magic gate ball. Magic top, <laughs> top just, eight ball. I just shook it. And Why have we never done if I? A piece called Magic Top Eight. Well, there we go. We'll do it next can we, time. Can we do that next week? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a kind of past. Man, do you have a Magic Eight Ball? Do I have a Magic Eight Ball? Yeah. No, I do don't. One? Like, I saw like a Magic Eight Ball and like decorate it with Magic themed things, so we can do video content like randomly for the Magic Top Eight Ball. I just want to ask Man, the Magic. If top... anybody else like starts doing this, I, I we got a copyright. This is mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is Patent mine. pending. <laughs> Even though I'm talking about painting a Magic Eight Ball, which I'm sure already has a patent, but I don't care. <laughs> Hey, we're we're modifying it enough to justify it, right? <laughs> By gluing a bunch of pictures from another copyrighted game <laughs> on top of it. Yeah, but like <laughs> two copyrights don't make a wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh please. Oh my god. That was so good. At first I thought you were angry at me, that but then was it like so it just dawned on you. I don't know what was happening. Oh, that was great. <laughs> that was that was perfect. Oh man! Wrap it up. We're done. Okay. <laughs> that's, okay. that's a wrap. <laughs> can't, can't, can't go any. Can't, can't go any higher than this. All right. Uh, well, that's done for the pro tour. Uh, we will definitely check back with you guys next week to kind of see what happened and see how horribly wrong we were or incredibly right we were. Um, uh, but you know, we will be watching that coverage for the pro tour starts at Friday at nine a.m. Eastern time. It's great. It's in you know Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not at four in the morning. It's not at four in the morning. You can like watch it all. It's it's perfect. It's beautiful. Um, we also have Star City Games Regionals that we've been talking about, um, hosted by Comic Town. It's going to be at the Columbus Courtyard West, uh, which is also known as Dave's Backyard. <laughs> um, it's in it, the notes. <laughs> it starts at uh, ten a.m. I assume uh, registration opens at nine. Uh, yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be true. I, okay. I you know, if, even if you're listening to this on a Friday, I would still strongly suggest. Pre-registering, I just went and looked. I think they have about 90 slots left. They did get an allocation of a couple extra, like, I think 70 extra playmats. Playmats, yeah. But you don't, you don't, I mean, if you're planning on playing in this, why would you risk, A, not playing in it, and B, not getting the free stuff that you could already get? Right, exactly. And it is $40 for entry, so. And the playmat's sweet. Like, this is, like, a playmat you might actually be tempted to keep instead of, like, trying to sell or pawn off or something like that, so. 
Yeah. S- selling and pawning off for the same thing. Yeah, shut it. <laughs> Just say. <laughs> we could sell it or what? What's the uh, the other thing that you can do in a pawn shop? You can... Um, you can go visit it. Well, you can sell it or you can uh, it. consign it. Can, That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, you can sign it. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Shut it. I knew there was another thing. Yeah, the, the thing on uh, Pawn Stars that nobody ever does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you want to sell it or do you want to consign it? I don't even know what consign means. What? Sell. Which one gives me money now? That one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Vegas. I need money now. <laughs> it's like, well, I'll give you like $3. That's fine. That's like one hand. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, and uh, we also have it on here that Comic Town is also going to be hosting a standard format Super IQ um, at the shop on Sunday. Uh, so that's the next day after you know the uh, the regionals and um, go play some Magic before the big game. It's pretty sweet. Play the big game before you watch the big, the big game. game. Do you want to talk about what we're going to be doing on Sunday? Uh, we're we're having PT breakfast, right? Yeah. PT breakfast. And I'm really surprised that you guys didn't comment on my sweet Photoshop. Oh, no, I loved I it. I loved it. I did. <laughs> uh, he's got some pancakes uh, on top of some uh, some of the Oath of Gatewatch people and uh, a couple other. Oh, man, it's really good. I really yeah. enjoyed it. So so we did this once before where I think it was Worlds. Was it the it Worlds? Worlds, yeah. The Worlds where Patrick Chapin lost to who in the final? I don't know. A couple years ago. Uh, yeah, we had all kinds of. Breakfast foods, omelets, and bacon. I, I enjoyed the, how you managed to get the straw of or, from orange juice into Jace's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this so, is this is all very effective. Um, it's uh, unfortunate that uh, you know no one listening to this really is invited. Um, some people are, but <laughs> most not the, of the people in this room. <laughs> uh, no, uh, you guys won't get to necessarily see this. But you, uh, you maybe Dave will share it. Yeah, you should just tweet out this this image so people can see. I, yeah, I'll definitely tweet out. And the image. you can take it and put it in your own groups when you do your own PT breakfast. It's great. Dave comes over and like like comes to like my home, which is the best part about it, because his wife doesn't want him up like watching magic coverage, so he's over at my place, and then he's making some omelets. Oh and, yeah, I'm making like pancakes, and some pancakes. And eggs. Oh and... man, oh, I'm yeah. excited. It's it's a good time. I, I, I go nuts for, for breakfast foods for whatever reason. Like I, I don't like cook that much normal you go ham little dinners. It? Yeah, I go I go ham when it comes to breakfast. <laughs> literally. Uh but <laughs> but uh I don't know. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun last time. It's been a while, so you know, I figured you know, maybe, maybe it's a good time to do it again. We have we have a top eight that starts at a reasonable hour, so we can actually do it. Yeah, so that'll be exciting, and um, uh, that's pretty much going to be uh, it for us this week. We, uh, you know, wish you guys all a wonderful weekend, happy Pro Tour viewing, and um, uh, of course, uh, if you guys are going to be at regionals, we wish you best of luck there, and um, we'll catch you guys next week, and you have a great one. Bye. Bye.